Bobby Devo was my uh, idol when I grew up. I met Jean when I was 10 years old, Quebec City Pee Wee Tournament. I scored a hat trick that day and Jean was there. We took a picture together, he was putting a hat on my, on my head and he said, maybe one day we'll see you in the NHL. Born in Thurso, Quebec, Guy Lafleur played with an elegance and natural talent reminiscent of his idol. He wore Beliveau's number four and shattered junior scoring records with the Quebec Remparts. The Canadians held the first pick in the 1971 draft, and until draft day, there was some question as to whether they would select Lafleur or St. Catherine's standout Marcel Dion. From the Quebec Remparts, Guy Lafleur. When you're a kid, your dream is to eventually play in the NHL and to play with your team, Montreal Canadian, because they were the best and because of the chance of winning the Stanley Cup. Nicknamed the Flower, Lafleur's start in Montreal was anything but easy. He didn't have a great rookie season. It was fine, but it was certainly not to the standards that you know was imagined of him. In the second year, pretty much the same. The third year, pretty much the same. The expectations were too high. He came as John Beliveau retired. They thought that Lafleur was coming in to replace Beliveau. You don't replace a guy like that. Uh, Andrew Richard, Dima Cournoyer were telling me one day, stop listening to everybody, just play your style. You'll get your confidence back. And that's what I did. And the first time I see Guy Lafleur on the ice, I went back home and I said, wow. What a hockey player that guy is. So that was just a matter of time that he was going to be one of the best players in the NHL. After those three years, he became the number one player in the league by a country mile. In his fourth season, Lafleur netted 53 goals and 119 points, more than doubling his totals from the previous year. It was the first of six consecutive seasons with 50-plus goals and 100-plus points. During that time, Lafleur collected three straight scoring titles, three straight Lester B. Pearson awards, and two Hart trophies as MVP. He was the Rocket Richard of the 70s for Montreal fans. Everyone watched the way that this guy skated and scored goals, and he was who I really wanted to be. He was exciting. He had one visual key that could describe that speed, and that was his hair going up the right side 90 miles an hour and that long hair going. There were very few players who would actually lift you out of your seat. But when Lafleur took the puck and his hair was flying behind him, people literally got out of their seats. The Canadians won four straight Stanley Cups from 1976 to 1979. Lafleur won the Conn Smythe in 1977 and paced playoff scoring for three consecutive seasons. He gets it into the mare, back to Lafleur! He scored 518 goals with Montreal before retiring 19 games into the 1984-85 season, but made a comeback four years later with the New York Rangers. I told them, just invite me to the training camp. First scrimmage, goes to the right, takes a shot, far end, scores. After a year in New York, he returned to Quebec to close out his career with the Nordiques. When I was on the ice, I was home because every time I was on the ice, I was the happiest guy in the world, especially for wearing the Montreal Canadian uniform. Guy Lafleur's dream was to play for the Montreal Canadiens. He retired as the storied franchise's all-time leading scorer. His 1,246 points outrank a myriad of legends, including his childhood idol, Jean Beliveau. Tonight, we give a tribune to Guy Flower Lafleur. We're going to take about one minute silence and honor of Guy Lafleur. Thank you. Welcome everybody to another special edition of the Power Play Show. Tonight, we're going to talk about the career of the key Lafleur. Passed away today at 71, uh, 71 uh, years old. Uh, and um, just what an amazing, great hockey player. I'm sure many of us have an Emmy, a lot of stories to talk about Guy Lafleur. So for the next couple of hours, we're going to talk about Guy Lafleur. And of course, at the end of the show, 
like we do. We do a Frenchy quiz, and tonight is going to be about easy question about Guy Lafleur. So be ready for those kind of questions. So we thank each one of you. The only thing we ask of you guys is to be sure you put the letter Q in front of your question so we can hang in with that. We're going to have Michael Devinanu going to join us the next 15, 20 minutes, and we're going to talk about Michael or so to that story. And um, we have, of course, the all the insider. Um, <clears throat> First in our tap is the insider of the warm-up show Monday to Friday at 6 o'clock. And then we have Mr. Um, Andrew, the insider of Montreal Canadian. When we do a game live stream, play by play, join us during the comments during the night. And uh, so we have both of them with us tonight talking about Gila Fleur. And uh, I will go start right away. Uh, we want to welcome, first of all, everybody in the chat. Uh, uh, we don't go to be Lid's friend tonight. We're not going to welcome each one of you one by one, uh, honestly. Um, just you, you understand the situation, uh, but we want to say to you, thank you so much to join us tonight, and uh, that would be great uh, to have your comments, tell us a bit more about your story about Guy Lafleur. But first, we're going to start with Mr. Inar Tap. Uh, tell us a bit more about your impression about you know the impact of Guy Lafleur uh, on your side. Well, it was uh, a, a, a tough day today, Coach. Uh, you know, got early word of it. Um, and even though we knew what the situation was, and uh, I was, as I was telling you earlier today, uh, the other night you you showed uh, the pictures, and you had the, the third one was bossy, and you said you stopped for a moment, and you said, unfortunately, it won't be long. We'll be seeing Gila Fleur here, and uh, uh, here we are today at this situ at this point uh, in time. Uh, for me. I, I grew up uh, in the 70s uh, with with the Montreal Canadiens. Um, you know, he was one of uh, one of my favorite players, uh, an idol of mine. I got to meet him, uh, I'd say, about four times in my career in person. Uh, one of them was a very special uh, moment, which at some point I'll, I'll uh, share with everybody. Um, but just, you know... Uh, a great, great hockey player, but to me, more importantly, a great human being. This guy would would be dedicated to, to the sport, but it, his life wasn't just about that. It was about being loyal to, to his fans, being loyal to his family, and uh, just, you know, a, a classy, classy person. Uh, rest in peace. Mr. Andrew? Yeah, I, I've had the honor of meeting Guy myself. Uh, I uh, took a couple of trips to the forum. I always, you know, had to, got the privilege of going up there as a youngster. And the same thing when he would come down to Halifax with the, when, because they would, uh, they would do the exhibitions here in Nova Scotia because it was the Voyageurs building at the Metro Center. So I got to see him even more. So it was great. He was a wonderful person when I met him. Um, humble as pie, but just talked to anybody. And I was just blown away because that was the first hockey player, even before I became a Ganey fan. Guy Lafleur, who I wanted to be first. And then, you know, I, it, they both had major impact. But Guy, to me, was just incredible. It's like you say, I mean, you look at him, you looked at Rocket Richard and John Bellavone, like you, Intertap. Uh, we all grew up in the 70s, so we had the privilege of, of watching his his career right through, and just a class act. And uh, it was a hard day. It was really hard to hear first thing this morning. I I couldn't even talk to. I was just uh, yeah. It was tough. It was tough. He had a big impact on the way I played hockey for sure. Yep. Um, you know I can talk about Gilafer all night, so it's not like. Your purpose, I did a video today. You can watch my video when I talk a little bit more about Guy Lafleur, everything like that. Uh, I was just shortly, um, so because I'm reading all the comments, some will never see Guy Lafleur, like Bunny Monkey is like 15, 16 years old, right? But I, I, Adam just I never saw Lafleur play. I'm young. Uh, yes, Adam, you just turned 19 last week. Uh, wow. But uh, my point is like, I, I wasn't able to watch him at five years old. I, uh, my dad was scout for the QM, and then he, 
he was talked to him about that. He won, they won the Memorial Cup. I still remember when he won. I still remember. Uh, they won the Stanley uh, the Memorial Cup for the Quebec Grand Prix. For 25 years, no yeah. team won the Memorial Cup after that. From 1970 to 1935, and I was the video coach for 1995 for the Grand Prix Predators when we win the stake at the Memorial Cup in Pedro uh, when we beat the Pete Pedro over there uh, with Michel Therrien as a coach. Uh, but again, uh, Guy Lafleur was something very special, not only for me. Um, you know, last week we talked about Michael Bassi and uh, all the comments they got and everything. And it's, again, bigger today for me. Why the, yeah. Everywhere. Like everywhere around the world talk about Guy Lafleur. Uh, they heard about that name. And, you know, uh, today I'm listening. Uh, Josh Molson, Martin St. Louis. You have an article from Ken Hughes. And everybody right, left and right. And, you know, everybody know what Guy Lafleur accomplished on eyes, off eyes. I still remember that when he almost lost his life during, next, uh, during a crash of the car. Car, uh, you yeah. know, He was lucky about that one over there. And, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, he... You know, he, he played his life like like any like any other body, like anybody else. Where he he lived twenty four hours per day. He did everything he wanted to do. He, he was a specific. Uh, you know, he was so talented, skill wise. But he he enjoyed the life most, like anybody else. That's the most important thing for him. And um, look, tonight we're going to talk about him. We're going to talk about his career, what he accomplished, what he you know what he was in the NHL and everything, and the Quebec. You know, the Quebec, um, finished his career with the Quebec, North of Quebec, and everything like that. So any question you want to talk about, anything you want to mention about that. And, uh, you know, <sighs> life changed the last 20 years, 25 years, what less people smoke, right? But during those years, 60s, 70s, 80s, everybody was smoking, most of the people um, was smoking. And uh, those people was born in 50, 60, uh, pay the price more right now. Uh, both of them is the same cancer. It's the same thing, right? And uh, it's short. It, it, you know, it's young. Whatever is 70, 70 years old, it's short. It's, it's young, right? Uh, so, um, uh, and Bossy was 65. So, like, uh, and Nat talk about this, right? Uh, talk about the cancer, everything like that. And um, so there's a lot of story there. Alexandre Mayor, uh, Mayor, uh, Mayor is right here. Euh, J'aurais tant son temps parler d'un décès quelque chose dans les médias quand tu Ça va bien comment il est important. Yep, about that one over there. Um, Danny, I have to met, uh, I have to name, I met him in one of my hockey game plural again. About that. Um, try to get a couple of stories we got here. Um, Nat said, he was such a great player. I remember the late 70 Cup that he won. Um, Every time they call Guy Lafleur Taj de Park, they will call up Guy, 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 Guy. Uh, Adam said, no, I'm 43. I know. <laughs> it was one of the point, the best player at the game, I would say, uh, Michael said about him. Uh, Adam said, thank you, coach, for this beautiful tribute. You're welcome. Uh, yes, Adam. Um, very young. Uh, then said, Guy Lafleur was a class act, cannot replace a legend hockey player like Guy Lafleur. Um, that's why you never, uh, Danny, that's cool. You might want to get right of him. I'm a tech, uh, taker. Um, just give me, you know, you talk about the men, but what kind of influence you have uh, Gila Ford bring to you uh, when you see him play hockey uh, with a Canadian in Montreal? And I'll tap. Well, uh, like I said, Coach, for me, uh, in, in terms of a hockey player, I, I I saw a very smooth, fast skater who uh, thought thought uh, constantly out there. Like he he uh, he was, I think in his later years with Montreal, he was a victim of of the system. Uh, and what do I mean by that? Is the fact that Lemaire came in and he he was very much systems oriented, and Guy Lafleur doesn't fit well in a system operated uh, team. Uh, this is the kind of guy that actually would have fit perfectly under Martin St. Louis, uh, where he allows you 
to use your natural skills out there. I mean, you still have to have an organization out there. It's not that you're you're out there in, in a chaotic situation, but um, you have to allow these players that have a natural innate ability to to score, or skate, uh, think on the ice, and and at a moment's uh, uh, time, and and just allow them to do what they do best. And and that's what we were seeing probably the first three years, even under Scotty Bowman. Uh, first of all, he came into a market which was very tough, uh, and and the media obviously is always, you know, they were expecting a successor to John Bellow and. And that was the first mistake. Uh, I think even Lafleur was trying to fit that image. And it wasn't until a few players pulled him aside and said, look, you know what? You have to be you. Go out there and do what you have to do. And I heard a great story this morning um, where they I think it was, uh, oh, I think it was Lemaire, but I'm not sure. Just said, look, you don't follow a system very well, Guy. Just go out there, listen to everything that Scotty Bowman's got to say, and then go out there and do your own stuff. Forget everything he said. And it wasn't until then that he started to really uh, uh, come on hard in terms of uh, being himself and and, and producing uh, uh, productively from year to year. Uh, in terms of, like I said, hockey, you think of guys like um, Morenz, you think of Richard, you think of Beliveau. Uh, Lafleur, obviously, in the next era, and then the next slightly after era, I would even put Patrick Waugh there uh, for me. Um, so that's what I I kind of got. <sighs> Sorry, it's a bit uh, bit tough to sometimes get through these kind of things. Uh, that's what I saw in terms of the hockey player uh, on a more personal basis. Uh, just if I, if I may share a, a brief story, uh, like I said, I got to see Lafleur about three or four times. I think four times uh, in in my life span, and uh, like a lot of these things that I have here, it's because I go to a lot. I, I used to go to a lot of card shows, and uh, what they would have is a lot of um, a lot of NHL players that would go. Uh, to these as well. They're, they're obviously paid to go there, fly in for an hour, sign as many autographs as possible or, or, or uh, jerseys, whatever people bring to them. And then they leave very quickly. Um, one time I went and uh, I, I know my daughter um, wanted to come with me to the car show. I think she was about, I want to say about eight or nine years old at the time. And uh, we got there a bit late, and so we uh, we ran all the way to the back of of, the, of this thing. It's 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 like a hangar, and it's a huge, huge pl- warehouse with all these booths set up and everything. And at the back is where the signatures were occurring in these long lineups. And we got down to the end, and Lafleur wasn't there. He had just left, right? We we had, and so the guy that was organizing it said. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, you guys missed missed Lafleur. He left about five minutes ago, and he, you know, he went straight out the doors through the front, uh, which is not a unique thing to do. Usually, they go out the back to avoid the public, and uh, they get bust out or or limoed out. Uh, so we thought, okay, well, it's a long shot, but let's. Let's quickly run through the place and see if he's still around before he leaves. I said to my daughter, right? And she said, okay, fine. We finally got to a point uh, and, and we we saw maybe 10 meters away from us that he was there and he was with two other people, um, probably bodyguards. I don't know who they were, to be honest with you. And we just shouted his name and he turned around immediately and he he came over and you know uh he he approached us uh he shook our hands he he saw my daughter and he kind of ignored me the rest of the time which was fine and just started to talk with her he actually took a seat from one of the booths that was there 
And he started to talk with my daughter and ask all sorts of questions. The first thing he noticed is they almost had identical jackets that day, both him and my daughter, which was uh, um, quite a coincidence. And, um, you know, he, he started giving her all sorts of messages like, you know, work hard in life and, and you'll get to where you want to be. And uh, and he was gracious afterwards to even uh, give us uh, – uh, allow us to take a picture and i just want to share that with you guys um i don't know if you can see that there he is with with uh my daughter and this was maybe I, i'd say about 10 years ago yeah and so that you notice the jackets that are <laughs> identical there and for me it was such a classy thing for him just to take the time to talk to her it, it it made her day uh she s couldn't stop talking about it for uh, at least a week um and he just took the time and and you know signed a couple things for her um uh, just classy classy man yep <clears throat> you have a few people i, I want to uh share it with him then come back with each one of you Welcome, Michael De Villano. <laughs> like he showed between everybody. And who is this guy? You know, it's Michael De Villano. <laughs> That's what happened. No, um, I, I, because I didn't talk about like uh, he said. Brad Park said Lafleur was the hardest player to defend again because of his speed and shot. Now I was thinking today, like <laughs> Jerry Cheevers, like you know, like can see it. I'm sure he was tired to see Guy Lafleur on the ice all the time. He was like, every time he played against him, I think he scored all the time. Uh, one <laughs> quick comment from uh, Nat. Uh, she said that, I remember the first game I saw at the old forum, everyone was smoking inside the forum. Like, that's, that's how this changed, right? Uh, where we are at that moment. There was Sasha said uh, that's why i made comeback in 1988 i knew there was a chance of not making it but i did not want to end up 16 years old and said i would have tried when i was 38 gila Flory said about that one over there he, he came back in the nhl four years after that and one great comment about that alan Mirko said uh, he took the helmet helmet off and the demon blonde was born about that one over there uh they talk about jose uh, Jose, uh, the Avalanche just take the score. So, oh, here we go. Michael, uh, welcome back. Thank you to be a part of the show. And uh, maybe you have something you want to talk about a little bit, your uh, assessment about Gila Fleur before we move on to the next thing. Well, my uh, grandfather is uh, from Trois Rivières, Quebec, and his favorite player I remember growing up was always Gila Fleur. And they, they always had. Uh, uh, like a rooming house. So then they, and there was an apartment out back and there was a, a girl that lived in the back and she was on what was then called air Ontario. And I remember one time she brought back uh, a surprise, which was she knew that uh, my grandfather, Claudie Gilbert, Claudie boy Gilbert, wherever he is out there, um, that he loved the Canadians. And she told Guy Lafleur and Guy Lafleur took Craig Ludwood's stick and put tape on it and he signed it and he got everybody else on the team to sign it and gave it to her to give to him. <laughs> it, was, it was, it's like one of the greatest gifts. It was like, I wasn't there for it. Obviously I was a little kid, but, um, so I wasn't on the airplane, but I remember getting that my grandfather giving that to me. So that was, it was kind of neat. I think that always made me kind Very of a nice. fan of that group of people. There was like, you know, Bob Gainey was on there and Guy Carboneau and Bobby Smith. And there was a bunch of interesting guys. Steve Penny was actually on it. I think he might have been on it. It was like I don't I think it was before he had his little run there. And then I I remember when he retired, and it was like, what? This guy is still so good. Like he, you know, he always, always had the flying locks, you know, and he was so fast and skilled. Like it was crazy that he didn't have a helmet all that time. Even you, you see him in the old timer oh, game. The players, know, yeah. Like, <laughs> he's like in the old timer game. He's, it was like 2009, and I'm like. Wait, he doesn't have a helmet. That's not a warm up. He's playing out there without the helmet. <laughs> um, Michael, Michael, when you have hair like that, you got to let it flow, baby. You got to let it flow. Well, but he was bald too, wasn't he? Wasn't he remember oh, when he came well, back, he was on the bald, sides? Right? Yeah. But it was like this. It was like, but I think he got, I got, I don't know if he got like hair implants or something or a toupee. You got something done. 
I want to show you. Um, I got a picture of. Uh, this is Natalie, uh, not Lafond, that oh, shot oh, oh. with Guy Lafleur. That's amazing. Very nice. Very nice. So then I remember when he retired, and he retired, I think, for three years. And Phyllis Bazita was the GM in for the New York Rangers. He was a crazy trader, as you recall. Like he was just wheeling and dealing constantly. There was so much movement on that team. And then he brought him back for that year. And man, he could still play. He was just such a good player still. He was like 37 or 38. And then to have him go to Quebec was I don't think that Quebec hurts. was the great. It, it did. It was unfortunate. They were they were not a good team then, unfortunately. So it would have been nicer if they were a little stronger when he came back, but they were, it was, it was, it was great to see him at least skate two more years. And I think the one year he was almost point a game. He had like 35 or 34 points and he only played like 39 games or something. So he, yeah. he could still play, you know, he kind of got the rust off and it was a bit of a treat to see him. He was always a lot of fun to watch. Even if I wasn't a big Canadians fan, then I was like a closet Canadians fan. It's called a goal of when he come back in Montreal, by the way. I, I think for the Rangers and for Quebec, right? Well, as a Ranger, his first game, yeah, like even though they back. lost, he had yeah, I think he had three two points. goals and two goals and an assist. I think yeah, three yeah, points. it was yeah. quite devastating. <laughs> but they lost, which was the good thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it, it, yeah, that's what happened about that one over there. Uh, but did 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 Jacques Lemaire not center that line? Was it him, Steve Shot, and yeah. Jacques Lemaire yeah. at the line? Yeah. yeah. Oh that yeah, that was an awesome line. What a crazy yeah. line! And and they fit well together because, really, uh, I, I think Lemaire was, was sort of the defensive, offensive centerman that sort of set everybody up uh, and and could score himself. Uh, Lafleur was the guy that could skate through anything. He could he can shoot and score. And if he missed, Shut was amazing at finding those open rebounds and, and just depositing those goals. So they, the three of them really worked well together and knew exactly how they um, were, were going to be at any given time. Yeah. <clears throat> so he, he, he can score. And he had seven heart trophies in a row. Yeah. Like, wow. that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny too because Steve Shutt was interviewed today and he was saying you know what he said we might have looked really good he said but I could never figure out where Guy was going he was so unorthodox you had to be really watching him because he said I had no clue where to be <laughs> right? yeah so he learned he learned to play the rebounds he knew exactly, where exactly. Those rebounds was going. it's like basketball you know you, you play the rebounds box your man out and and score those uh, goals exactly. Yeah. What is your memory about him when he won the stand and during the playoff? Oh my Any God. specific goal or maybe Cup Canada Cup or a star? I reward. still love the goal. I still love the Boston. You know when when they got the penalty, he tied it up and gets gets the winning goal. That that'll just always stay with me for Guy. When yeah. In Guy's time. Yeah. That was that stands out for me all the time. Ended Don Cherry's career. <laughs> exactly. There was too many men on the ice, right? Yeah, the infamous <laughs> too, too many, many men, men on the ice, ice call. And then he went. Kilo goes down the other way and just that's it. Playoffs. Oh, yeah, beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that that particular moment uh, stands out there for sure. It's uh, it it you know what uh, that year uh, Boston, in all fairness, had the better team. Oh and yeah, it looked like they were going to finally end that that. Uh, reign uh, of Montreal and uh, that goal just changed the entire complexion of the game. I mean, it was game seven already, but it, yeah. it allowed the game to go to overtime and and Boston remember, hasn't recovered since. I remember that game so well that, you know, I was, of course, you know, Guido Fleur, Bob Ganey, just so intense into it. And like you said, yeah. watching Boston, I remember having my heart in my throat Tears were just about to start coming down because I thought this was it for us. We're done. And then Dean LaFleur comes and turns everything around. You know, <laughs> it was great. Alain Vianco so said, Alan said that he was a great playmaker, too, very creative, uh, LaFleur. He could all oh, skate, yeah. shoot the, pa uh, the puck. And then he talked about Steve, um, Steve Shot, where it was like uh, he can pick it up 
if you think, oh, he was uh, was that leap from 20 feet in the uh, uh, Steve shot. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, he was a uh, he's yeah. like a currency was pretty good about that one there. Yeah. Dan, thank you so much. Very kind of you. Welcome. And then uh, Adam remind he said, send Jonathan jump on the ice too soon. Too many men on the ice. Yeah. He was a tough son of a gun, though. <laughs> you know, that's that's the thing I remembered with LaFleur, with LaFleur, though. I mean, for a guy who was a goal scorer, he could take the abuse. He was incredible. Like Mon Montreal was so well built. They had goal scorers, but then they had guys that could look out for them. It was just such a well-rounded team. But he, he really stood out to me being able to put up with, like, Terry O'Reilly all over him all the time. Right? I mean, just, he was yeah. monster, he amazed. Right? Yeah. Like that's an intimidating, strong person. Oh yeah, yeah. Between O'Reilly and Milbury, always trying to take them out, getting one way or the other, and uh, you know you'd have Big Larry there to come to the rescue. Thank God. But he was tough for a goal scorer. He really could take the hits. He amazed me. When you thought he would be laying, getting laid out, and taken off in a stretcher, he just kept going. Like I'll make you pay down in a different way. You know that was his attitude. Yeah. He left back. Yeah, I'm sorry, Marco. You know, go ahead. I was just ask. I was going to ask which uh, Canada Cup was he a part of. I can, I'm trying to remember because I can remember him being part. Was it uh, 80, 81, back to back? Oh, yeah, 81. First time, uh, only one goal, seven game, and then the second game, he had like second time only three points. He never performed yeah. well during the during the no, uh, Canada wasn't Cup. His thing. But he, at that moment, he was like 10, 11 years. He was like already like 20, 30, 31, 32 at that moment. About that one yeah. there. Um, I was just asking you maybe is like, you know, he, he did not only, ch you know, he was a, a hockey fan for the Montreal Canadiens, but he made an impact major and, you know, and the province of Quebec and Canada. But I tried to figure out this, like, it never going to happen again in hockey. Like, you have too many things changed, yeah. hockey changing now, the player from all around the con around the world, if you turn that, but any athletes could be close to him for what he did. He did um, make a major impact. Anybody close to him, like where, you know, he make a, because everywhere he go, everybody remember him, like, you know, from the north to south and Canada and Quebec, Quebec if you that. Any athletes you can call it like this one, you can be close or um, any, any sport. I, I, it's not a matter um, for me right now. Just the way people reacted to him, you mean? Yeah, that, like, you know, he make a major impact. Like, I think I could see close I to him, see. maybe LeBron James in Cleveland. Uh, I would I would say more uh, a Michael Jordan. Um, it's it's you weird. Knew, That's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, you knew that when a game was on the line, that some way, up. somehow, LeFleur would find a way to get that key important point, whether it was a goal, an assist, uh he just made himself a, a, a part of that play. Like he would take over a game, right? And that's yeah. what Jordan would do. Yeah, kind of like uh, Terry Bradshaw in the days of the steel curtain. You knew they were going to come through. You know, you knew yeah. he was going to make a make a big bomb, the Lynn Swan or, or Franco or somebody, right? You just knew it was going to happen. Or Stallworth. So he was that, that type of impact guy. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Alan said um, Canada Cup, uh, 1976 yes. to coach uh, for yes. um, Gilafla. Okay, that's yeah. what I was yeah. thinking. That was the one I was remembering. I didn't. I don't remember yeah. the 81. Luc Lafourcine uh, said uh, the you know the hit check by Pat Vin on Lafleur. You said him flying was epic. I don't know if somebody who remember that one. Yeah, take it. He could take it. He was. He was oh, amazing. For sure. You know, like I, I've not seen too many players, you know, that were that type of player that could take the abuse, but wow. Incredible. Tough uh, guy underneath. You, Coach, you bring up a, a good point, though. And, and I, I like when you say certain athletes, certain players uh, make an impact um, on, on not just a fan base, but also a team, a province, a state, whatever the case might be, a country in, in some cases. Um, and, and hockey's changed over the years. And, and I think that that's what causes it is, is the fact that you don't have that 
um, long-standing allegiance to a team anymore because of you know the constant trading that goes on and uh, free agency of course uh, so you don't you, you don't get that same fixed uh, I don't know how to describe it that same fixed emotion uh, attached to a team as you did maybe you know 15 20 years ago um, like when when you think of Lafleur I for me the the toughest day besides today obviously was when he got uh, when he retired but also when he got picked up by the Rangers and then consequently Quebec I, I just I couldn't see him in either one of those jerseys he was a Montreal Canadian and and the only other time I had the same feeling was um, with Patrick Roy when he skated off the ice that last game uh, with Mario Tremblay pulling him way too late I thought to myself this is going to set the organization back at least 10 years and to this day we haven't seen very much happening true enough no yeah it's weird how Montreal kind of has this got to calm down sometimes you know because we you've seen so many instances like that now like how many do you have to have historically where you kind of run your guy out of the town it doesn't make sense exactly and you know it's sad because uh, I hate to say it but uh, (laughs) as much as I love Serge Savard that was kind of the beginning of a lot of you know the players that should have stayed put kind of started getting tossed out so you know it was kind of hard I I never Serge thought. Savard, you're right, but Serge Savard, he knew he was in a tough situation, right? Like yeah. he knew that Lafleur um, and Lemaire weren't getting along because of one. I mean, you can't play together, and then somebody's your coach, uh, right? <laughs> and I'm right, sure, you know, it, it's hard to to delete. Now you're going to come to play like you did. Play like I did. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Play some defense. Yeah, right. He wasn't going to be a defensive player. Play the system. Sure. By no means. You know? And so there was a lot of pressure to trade Lafleur in that uh, yeah. last year in, in 84, 85. Uh, but Savard knew that it would cause an uproar in, in Montreal. And he would right. he just refused to do it. So it yeah. forced Lafleur's hand to retire for a couple of years. Yeah. And it was hard to see him going into to be put into that position where he was such a big thing there. You know, it's like too bad they couldn't have found a way to work through it because he was a legend. You know. Yeah. Two things you, if you remember, the old those years, Gilafleur starting to abuse a lot of uh, affect like drugs, everything like that. So uh, off yeah. ice he was a little bit not mentally at that moment like he was at the seventies. Second thing, I think you forget one person behind everything. Ron, uh, Ron, uh, Ronald Corey. Uh, you took the word, yeah. Uh, uh, the organization where you have a big effect about that one there for the image, culture, whatever you call it about that. So um, put all together, right? Uh, I think Sir Chabal was not on the position to only talking for himself. You have to right. have some other decision behind him. Um, happening on that one. So I just want to share this about Ron, uh, Ron Corey, uh, yeah. about that one there. But uh, I want to mention this on, uh, um, before we go consistent. Um, Alan said that Montreal Canadian management should pay more tribute to the old star. Um, you know, first of all, Alan, you're right. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, it's, not always, it's funny you bring that subject, maybe you follow, but the Montreal Canadian restart this week to have that kind of connection between the old players like Réjean Old, Cornoyer, they have a specific, like a, uh, a gathering uh, Thursday, Wednesday night, I believe. I where they bring oh, everybody, the and then you have Shalom yeah. McCabe was in charge about this, what Ken use and also um, Jeff Gordon, everything like that. So it's coming, Alan. Uh, Martin said we have a great story about with Ivan Cornoyer, and you know he was talking about those stories. So uh, it's happened, Alan. Done. It's a great point to bring this. Uh, about that, and uh, glad you sharing with uh, you sharing this to us. So I'm um, glad to see that. Um, any comments you want to add before um, uh, Mr. Aki Junkie? Um, no more suffering. Share Gary. Uh, enjoy the show as well. Thank you so much, Aki. Yeah, Have you. a great uh, YouTube channel, Aki. And hey, Aki. You did a great job, buddy. By the way. So um, yeah. Uh, anything you want to add? Comments about yeah. this? I know we're shifting, but. 
in, in meeting him, and it kind of attributes to exactly what you were saying, Coach. Uh, that was the one thing I really found with LaFleur. He was really a tender type of gentleman. The, his emotions and the, the opinions really got to him. He really kind of wore his heart on his sleeve. He was a very, very sensitive man. But what a, you know, just I just wanted to put that out there. He was a, so humble and a big heart. But yeah, he felt the pressure a lot. He was that type of individual. Yeah, I, I think at some point also you have to me- remember he, like, he was honest. Uh, yeah. And that creates sometimes controversy. He didn't want to play around. If he was saying something, he was said he was said. How many times, uh, you know, during those years. Uh, one thing, the, uh, I didn't talk about this, but uh, the Montreal Canadiens, when Josh Molson got the team for the second time, when they buy like from Gillette, everything like that, they negotiated with Gila Fleur to come back with the team. I'm watching, I'm Call looking at you, but I'm looking here because they're on over time right now. Uh, they are coming back and they are hiring him and they start to negotiate the contract and they gave him a forever, um, a contract forever. Like they gave him 10 years contract and uh, then after that, it just consists of this. So it was a great gesture for Josh Molson uh, when he yeah. did that. He didn't want to him for a two, five, three years uh, contract. So I just want to mention to you about that. Uh, uh, Alan said, have a good night. Thank you so much. Appreciate a lot. Um, I, anything you want to add right now? I know I changed the subject about them, but, but I want to conclude with Alan, what he was talking about. Did, did you feel, was your impression at the time, because this was mine, that they told him he was going to retire. The story was like they was pushing him to do that. Um, yeah. That's what yeah. the story about that one over there at some point. And that's happened, right? Uh, I, I saw the, today the, the night that happening. And then, but again, he feel like he was not ready for that. And then he come back a little bit later. Um, like I said, you have a lot of stories behind that door where, you know, he was not always on the good conditioning. He was not, he was missing a lot of good thing. What to be really a, a top shape. If you turn that, not only smoke, but a lot of behind say, that, like, the okay. family <laughs> problem. If you turn that. Yeah. Well, the, the, the sun was a disaster, right? Yeah. One sun, yes. He, he, yeah. he got into a lot of trouble with the law. Was it Mark? Is that his well, name? Sorry, Martin. I think it was Martin actually, or yeah, Mark Martin. or Martin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, he even went to court on his behalf and kind of. I remember that. Fibbed a bit <laughs> on his behalf. That's how much he put his himself on the line for his kid. You know, just hard spot to be in. He had a hard time there. And he, well, he became a rough a, uh, like. Guys. First bossy and now this. Like, what's what's the third thing that's gonna happen? That's, well, that's I, exactly what I was saying. And I was we've like, had uh, we've had uh, Gillies and uh, Palman yeah. in in a short stretch of time, as well. It's in Mark. Uh, it's hard. Mark. Yeah. Mark. Mark. Yeah. I think it was Mark. I do think there is a Martin too, though. I think he has two sons. It's Martin, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. So my yeah. um. It was funny because I was talking to my mom today who called me and we had, I think I mentioned, we had Mike Bossy as a team spoke, as a company spokesperson. And, you know, I asked, she doesn't really know, she knows enough about hockey just that I'm involved. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I said, hey, do you remember Mike Bossy? He passed away and she was like really upset. She goes, he was such a nice man to us. And she recounted this long story about how kind he was and he spoke to us all and spent time with us and he was sharing stories and I, I think they had that in common right there's that gentlemanly factor that i don't i think that that's runs through players a lot now in the nhl Absolutely. still like maybe you know maybe more than any other sport yeah and I think uh, it was yeah, for sure. he's the only one he he, he lost the stanley cup like is like it the one? Is it oh. him? Like he he loves the <laughs> same guy. He found the same guy three days after the Toronto. Well, I don't know if he's the only yes, one, I but he definitely he, did. I think you're right. Yeah, I think he did. They broke. <laughs> they left him in a cab or something, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. No, he was in the trunk and the trunk of the car. Yeah, a little bit he did too not much. Know what it was. it was the trunk. Yeah, but was was it the car that it was a cab? No, I, th- I think I think it was a cab. I think you might be right. 
Yeah. I, I'm just, I'm just right. vaguely remember. I can't remember. I remember yeah. that. That's right. I forgot about that. I, is it, the key is because everybody was worried because nobody can find any, can find a Stanley <laughs> Cup. Like I know they have one at the Hall of Fame, but still, uh, those times that the time that time that the, the, the Stanley Cup was not traveled all around the world, right? Yeah. I have no guy beside the, the Stanley Cup, you know what I mean? So um, that's that's really the story about Gila Fleur and, you know, how many stories you can hear from him uh, with those Gila Point and everybody else, everything like that. So, uh, you know. Hockey Junkie's saying that Michael Ryder brought the cup to Newfoundland and dropped it off the table, but that's just like a Newfoundland. Hockey Junkie <laughs> said Michael Ryder brought the cup to Newfoundland and he dropped it off a table onto the ground. <laughs> Yeah, I really think he dented it. It dented it. <laughs> it dented it. <laughs> so Luke Lefferson said he stole it and he brought it to Tussle. Um, so that's <laughs> what about that so one over there. Uses of that tra- that cup. <laughs> and yeah, he was, if I remember correctly, you know, if you, if you'd probably remember the older fellows here. We remember the old uh, Monte Carlo commercials he would do in the Yo Plate. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of when the commercial thing started really eating up in hockey. He was kind of the first real pusher of that. Yeah. I, did he I do? Uh, did he do Molson commercials? Uh, I think he started to. I think he started to towards latter years. He may yeah. have towards the end. Did he yeah, do like a, me, he did a hair transplant? I remember. I remember yeah, the restaurant also. Commercial. Yeah, but he did mics. the hair transplant. No, uh, it was a commercial he used to do. With it. Yeah, I think he did. Oh, I'm gonna look it up. I'm curious. I think I, I, I recall. Think, I think it. he did. I, I think he did. I remember the one R- Richard used to do with the Grecian formula. The Grecian formula. I love that. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> it was so easy. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. You know what? You know, we're, as much as we've talked about Guy Lafleur, he will forever be linked to one other guy, which is Little Beaver. So he, he and Marcel Dion, right? Like that's right, exactly. And were, like, in the queue, and they were, you know, drafted one and two. Like it was like, which one are we going to pick? And yes, I know. Thing uh, you know, we don't actually, talk tonight, but Guy Lafleur was the guy who show up at two o'clock afternoon uh, before the game start. Oh yeah, yeah. Wow, absolutely. Uh, you know, I mean, but, like. Like Josh Monson, <laughs> Josh Monson said, uh, you know, he said, for me, it's like, I, re- I have a lot of story, but he said one thing was like, he was always early. Like, you know, he said that he was show up at the game like three, four hours. He said, you know, when he worked with us, we have specific meeting and everything like that. And he was short like two hours in my office. And we don't know what to do with him. He was sitting in the <laughs> chair like, geez, two hours we start. And he said, what, what do you want? <laughs> like, you know, so he, he said, but that's what he was. Like, he was always been there before everybody and he yeah. was ready. And that's why so it was funny to see that, like, you know, whatever it was a meeting. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, that was an interesting story, the way he was drafted. I mean, Sam mm-hmm. Pollock, talk about being a genius. Oh, like, he, excellent. He, well, he's Quebecois. He we got to get him. <laughs> two years prior to, he, he arranged crazy, that uh, uh, they exchanged, I think, first round picks the year before, threw in, I forget the player's name, that they threw into the deal with the California Golden Seals so that they would ensure that, probably, right? that they'd get the first round pick so that they can get Lafleur. But, um, had had they gone even Dion, I, I mean, he would have been a great story here as well. But uh, do you remember, Michael? wasn't Wasn't Dion originally uh, selected by Detroit? He was. I was going to say that is the most bizarre story that I've never gotten my head wrapped around. And and I, then why did they get rid of him? That it, I I believe it had to do with money, and they basically got did they get wow. Dan Maloney back, and they got something else. It was it was like forever. Like, how do you live that trade down? Wow! Because he was like well, three like, or four that's years like us, That's like us living down, not taking Denny Savard and taking De- Dougie Wickenheiser instead, right? That yeah. was the beginning yeah. of all the bad troubles. <laughs> Crazy. He was traded. Yeah. yeah. So it was. He was traded with some guy named Bart Crashley. <laughs> Bart wow. Crashley with Marcel Dion to the L.A. Kings for Terry Harper. 
Dan Maloney and a second round pick, which ended up being Jim Roberts. Wow. 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 Like, it's so ridiculous to even see that. And he had played four years. And and I can't remember what the number was. He had just had a hundred and twenty. He had good numbers. He oh, had did he ever? Guys. Yes, because they were 47. saying <laughs> in Montreal, the media was going nuts that for three years, they, LeFleur yeah, wasn't living they, up they to were, the expectations. He was outperforming LeFleur, yeah. 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 Absolutely. It was like craziness. Yeah. I remember crazy. that. About that. But so that was a big had, mistake by Detroit. Wow. Yeah, forever. He had wow. 77 points as a rookie, 28 goals, 90 points. He dropped down to 78 in his third year. They were terrible. He was a minus 31. And then 121 points. Wow. And next thing he was the LA Kings. And he and listen to the seasons he had in the LA Kings. Because for all intents and purposes, you know, he he was the last guy to beat Gretzky for the art ross they had the same number of points but he had more goals than gretzky in his rookie year so yeah. he had 121 point season he had 122 point season he had 130 137 135 117 107 <laughs> he had an injury plagued 66 game 92 point season and then he came back for 126 points with the, all with the kings Amazing. and that's funny it's funny you say that too because when you when you hear gretzky in an interview who was the one team and the one player that he didn't want to meet in his own division, LA Kings. And it was Marcel Dion. That was who the Oilers really were worried about. What a draft, but you mean just like you had two generational players right there, you know, like it's just incredible. Well, is, is, that, is, is that, that what they're, they're saying for next year? Is that what they're saying for next year? What? Well, I mean, it, I, I think you can, you can argue that Mishkov is like a Pavel Bure type impact player. I, I mean, they can say whatever they want about this guy. He, he just yeah. scores and scores and scores and scores. Like, he is the real deal. And yeah. Bedard, I think, you know, he's going to be sneaky great. I mean, I don't, I don't see how he – I think the question is, can this guy play center? Or is he a winger? And if he's a winger, then I just don't know if his impact's going to be the same. Right. You know, he could be a very good pro or he could be a star. I don't I don't know. It's really tough to say. I, I don't know if either of those is generational. Okay. Really? Wow. I don't, well, I, I mean, I he's maybe the third. Like, do you consider Pavel Bure generational? Yeah. 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 The way he played for Vancouver, yeah, I do. I think we forget one Super guy early. here, and you're going to surprise everybody. Is Adam Filippi uh, of Pilifi uh, from the USHL. He scored 37 goals the last two months and a half in USHL. Wow. And uh, oh, you're yeah. going to see him tomorrow. Uh, who's watch that? him because Philippe? we talk about Bedal Meshka, but he's the top like the him right, right there. So it's possible you have three players like, like wow. all together. So everybody finished one, two, and three next year. They got a superstar on their team. Nice. So that's what the two thousand. Nice. Like Shane is a two thousand and five or a four, right? Which so one? Shane four. Two thousand four, I believe. Yeah, cause then Bedard is a two thousand and five. Then that makes sense. Five. Yeah. And Mishkov yeah. is an overager because he has a late birthday. Oh right. So, but you know, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with the Russia thing. Yeah, well, it's, it sounds like they're just going to let it be. That's they're what I'm hearing. Away. That's what I yep. heard. Yeah, that's what I heard too. But it, right now, well, he's like, Mitch Cobb is signing. He's signed with KHL for three more years. So, right, um, it would be interesting about that one over there for sure. Welcome, Mr. Steve G, and also um, Jose Duarte. Thanks to be a part of the show. Uh, uh, Mitch Cobb is my man. I want the top three next season. Alexander Mayer which teams stay away? Which teams stay away from the Russian okay. and the, the draft? Well, they'll be cautious, I think, until we, you know, the situation in the Ukraine is a little bit more settled and we know what's going on. But uh, yeah, I, I, I could see players slipping a little bit lower down the list because of it. Yeah. Um. One one thing to talk about is I think he is right is uh, Aki Junkie said uh, one more year like this one and the future could be fantastic if they get a top three pick next year as well. 
I agree. You talk about Montreal? I agree. Is yeah, that about Montreal? Montreal, oh. Montreal yeah. yeah. Talking about the Habs, yeah. If we can get two top, th- you know, top threes both years, that should really put us on the right track. So if you guys take Slavkovsky, then what do you got? Then we need Bedard. <laughs> I mean, you're not getting a franchise player in Slavkovsky. No, oh, but yeah. he, he would he would he would definitely fit yeah. with with Caulfield and uh, Suzuki. They need a winger badly, and we I don't know, have Michael, one right they now. They said uh, so yesterday they consider Slavkovsky exactly like Shemnikov for the Carolina Hurricane. Yeah. Really, I know you I, have yeah. you have some I, reservations. I know that. <laughs> you I, think I like he's more that. like Zaka? Like Svechnikov, you knew was just going to be an absolute goal scoring machine, and I just, I, you know, you've had two years in a row where the he's had trouble producing offense, even though he's bigger and faster and more powerful than everyone. Now maybe he needs to play the pro game, and if that's the case where he's a winger like Svechnikov, and that's what you project him as, and I mean that's that's great. That's what you want. That's amazing. Well, you just want you know if you just a size alone. Right, he'll create havoc. Let let Caulfield pump the the goals. Right, create the space for him. It's gonna be I really mean, evident. Today. Anderson yeah, can't I, seem to fill the void. Right, Evans is not, or not Evans. Uh, who was the other guy? Pit like the, the two of them aren't filling the void. So no, they get they don't look on the He's, he's not a second liner. liner. What's Pitlick that? Is a, it's it's a tough. Pit- yeah, I think Pitlick's more of a third liner. Oh yeah, like, for all, sure. All those sure. guys, like if even if you get Slavkowski, uh, ideally, ideally you would want him with Caulfield and uh, Suzuki. But that, yeah. in in reality, I would say that would have to be your solid second line. I still don't think that that's a first line. Uh, oh, I agree. Trio. I agree. It isn't. Really, it isn't. It's a second so line. You're totally if right. You lucked, uh, if you lucked out and got, uh, let's say, um, next year you got Bedard or, or or even Mitchkov, then you have the genesis of a first line right. uh, player with a couple of wingers that you can you can get uh, in, in other ways, right? Totally agree. And then, then you'll see quite a change in the organization, but... We still far away from that, but we are close. Also, we're going to see this May ten. May ten, that's yeah. what's happening. The that's, NHL draft. That's, that's why right. yesterday I was I was saying yesterday. I, I know you guys didn't uh, agree with me, but it's not easy. It's not easy to rebuild a team. There's just so many factors that come into play, and to say you know three to five years you can rebuild a team. Yeah, but I think it takes. I think it takes longer. It just Not depends like on, record. you know, they don't, I don't know if they have, you think about the Rangers and why they're great. You know, they got Panarin. That yeah. was a huge piece. It's like they weren't ready, but he still went like right. that never happens. You know, they don't, nobody goes to a team and hopes they eventually turn it around. Right. Exactly. So and, 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 and don't forget Sabanajet too. Right. Well, I was going to say the, next exactly. one, which is the theft of the century was Broussard for Zabanajad. And yeah, at the exactly. time, it was like, why are you doing this? Like, Pierre Dorian, how do you still have a job? Exactly. <laughs> like, Ottawa today should have been a top notch team. Yeah. Don't let that guy trade anybody. Yeah. Let him keep drafting. <laughs> and they're slowly getting to that position again. I think they've. They've drafted oh. some great players. Uh, they they have the implants for a, a super team if they develop the way they're supposed to. 100%. Let's hope they don't get traded along the way, right? Yeah. If, like right now, like conceivably, Stutzley, Kachuk, Norris is you know way better than people realize. Even Formington is way better than I realized. Batson. Yeah. He is. Bathurst is way better than Bathurst, you realize. Like, exactly. but, uh, you know, whatever. But, man, he can he can play. He's got talent. Yeah. And now you're bringing in the D. 
So now you're going to have Brandstrom, you're going to have Shabbat, Shabbat you're going to have yeah. Bernard Docker, and the real kicker is going to be Jeff Sanderson. And between yeah, Sanderson right. and you might have two captain type guys there. And what's funny is they're both American. And and don't forget, you're going to have two great goalies in Sodart and uh, uh, Forsberg. Yep. The guy that's there now, the, it was like, is that was it Forsberg that played the other night? Or was it yeah, Dustin? I think so. Yeah, it was Forsberg. Back in the AHL. Who? Yeah, it must be Forsberg. He yeah, he's yeah. really good. That's a good goalie. Yeah, and Sodart is going to be another fantastic goalie i mean Gav Davson is good tonight he's just won again on the on the ot so uh, it's just uh -oh. shoot out. <laughs> it is Gustafson. they got three goalies <laughs> you know what? i think i think it was Gustafson because I, I don't think he's had a great year but last year when we watched him i'm like wow this is a legit talent and then i watched the game maybe about three four nights ago i'm trying to think of which game it was and i'm like who's is that who is that goalie and i'm pretty sure it was Gustafson. has he played twice this year this week that's a check um, I'll check. I'll check. This week, Gustafson. Yeah. No, he was Forsberg the last game. It was okay. Tonight so was maybe. Yeah. Wow, well, then they're in good shape. I mean, we have yeah. a few people yeah. just show up. Key Labs, uh, welcome aboard. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, um, he want to ask you how long ago was Bussy? About seven yeah, days. Ten days ago. So, against uh, almost, against Vancouver. Almost a week exactly. Against Vancouver it was Gustafson when Ottawa won in overtime. So it was. Okay, that's the it game was. I saw. Yeah. yeah. He was so yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. So they're they're strong in the net then. There you go. And then we have yeah. Peter Grim uh, Grim Shaw. Welcome aboard. Thanks to join us. Uh, uh glad to see that great story Peter. Thanks for sharing with us uh, about that. Uh a lot of flower coming to the flower grave RIP gay. Uh, Francois, I thought Ottawa would do better this year, but I guess next year we'll see them uh, blossom about that. Yeah. That's the most lucky team he's ever played, right? They were one of the first teams that really got hit by COVID, right? Yeah. And yeah. it got to a point they had, I think they had to play three or four games when they had, uh, I think it was okay. 11 players out of the lineup. Well, yeah, and the and the NHL let it go. <laughs> it like, wasn't until some of the Ottawa? better teams. Where's Ottawa? <laughs> What's Ottawa? At that moment, also yeah. they have a lot of injuries. Did they ever? Yeah, yeah, they did. They did. You know, Connor Brown, you lost Pinto, you lost Patterson. Uh, yeah. You know, so uh, it's a lot of uh, Shabbat. Uh, Shabbat, that's another one about that one over there. So uh, you know, it's a team struggle a lot. Uh, until, but again, for the second year, they always play better on the second half of the season. Yeah. Well, Stutzley started out kind of a little slow. Fifty-three yeah. points, guys. Twenty goals. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. He turned it yeah, off. He's going fine now. Yeah. Good hockey uh, player. Alexander, I year. like Gustafsson too. He came to Ottawa in the Brussels trade to Pittsburgh. If I can remember, yeah. if I remember. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's it. He's a big. He's a big guy too. Six two, yeah, yeah, but again, I think Forsberg is really the one over there, and then they sign Murray. That's not a you know, what I mean, like they have four goaltender now they can trade, but Forsberg is yeah. pretty old, like Forsberg's Murray, like Murray, Murray seems to get backed up a lot. That's the only thing I, I find with Murray, is he seems to be injury prone, he's a mess, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Forsberg is 30 years old, guys. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah he's, he's a 92. Around. Well, they, they just signed, they signed Sogard. So, like, he's going to be around be a good. long time. Yeah. yeah, he'll be good. Yeah. And he's also. So, hey, guys, boy, we got a playoff game tonight. Probably. I got to go. <laughs> What's that? Sorry. You guys not watching us? We have a playoff game tonight. Yeah. The Colorado? Uh, I see start tonight. No. Oh, oh so sorry. Good. Sorry. You're right. <laughs> And then what I found out, this is crazy. I don't know what happened. Like I was, I was, um, was I at the, I think it was in the tier one championships and they said, Hey, we moved the draft till June. I didn't find out till yesterday. They decided not to move it. They're keeping it May 19th. I'm like, Oh, well, wow. Really? Oh. oh, well, I'm prepared, but it was still kind of like, Oh, well, good thing I found That's out yesterday. It. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, All right, guys. Well, this is a really nice tribute. Thank you, Pierre, for doing this. This is great. 
Have a great night, guys. I'm going to go watch a little Take bit of Silver Tech Hockey. All right. Good Thank luck. you so much. Good luck. Appreciate Good it, Michael. Evening, Thanks, Todd. Bye. Good luck. It was Michael DiVillano, the insider of the Hockey Nation Live Show with all the prospect and junior, everything like that. Uh, before we leave, uh, it's 10 15. I don't want to stay too much here. You know, it's Friday night, and uh, I think people are uh, quiet tonight. So, uh, any story you want to bring, add one more. And the people in that chat, if you have anything you want to uh, add a question, you can ask right now before we go. Um, any one more uh, thought about Gila Fleur or mem memory or a story well, or something you can. You can mention one thing us. I can I can talk about when I like I told you I was just a youngster and I was you know playing competitive hockey so of course he gave me the piece of advice you know his piece of advice was spend more time on the ice and work the art extra hard and, he, and what he ended up doing was creating a monster because I ended up living in the rink it was just ridiculous and I took his everything he said right to the T to heart to heart but I gotta say it did uh, you know in a lot of ways pay off. So really appreciated all of his advice. He was 100% right. If you worked hard, it would work out for you. But he was, I could see where when you said, coach, that he was dedicated to be, you know, at the arena a couple hours ahead. Yeah, that because that was his advice to me. Spend lots of time. Sir, I know that. Yeah, it's just his, his dedication to the sport, and and like I said, it, even um, even even there, he, he never was the captain of the team. He still commanded a lot of attention, whether he was a player or later on a, an ambassador of the team. Uh, like he walks into a room and people listen when he has an opinion to give. Um, he he's. Uh, very closely listened to by many, many uh, uh, professionals. Alexandre is going to see Tristan uh, Luno. By the way, talking about Tristan Luno and Alexandre, I will go to get the coach of the QM, uh, the Kids No Olympic Hall, whatever they call it now. Nice. Um, nice. He's going to be with us during the, uh, May. So, uh, Excellent. Yeah, so expect Kids No is the name of the team. So he is just confirmed with me during the week. Um, so we expect him to be uh, with us. So that's uh, good news about this. So he tell us a little bit more about, you have a, a few good players over there uh, inside that team, the prospect NHL 22, 23. Um, so that's that's happening about that What over there. Um, you know, um, Guy Lafleur, like, um, it's funny because, you know, I, I was catch up a lot of story today and Josh Monson said, they have the privilege last week, they knew And I, I talk about this, like, expect Gil Gil yeah. Flower to, uh, to uh, it's coming very soon, right? Um, Molson and uh, Hughes have uh, a privilege to meet Gil Flower last week. Uh, private uh, um, met him, and uh, he said uh, he was still t tell us what we should do for next season. <laughs> he was still talking about the Montreal Canadian, like, Whatever he was like, you know, almost at the end of his life, he was still thinking about I K. But maybe we should do this, we should do that, and I think that's what. He, so, just give me an idea what you know. He, he was born uh, to be an hockey player, but he was he's going to be died the same way. Uh, the only thought it was always about the hockey, and plus important for him is about the Montreal Canadian. Um, you know, um, this is the end of the. The attention of the Montreal Canadian uh, players. What I want to say to you is you have Maurice Richard for 20 years, carry on the flame. Then you got Jean Beliveau for 20 years, he got the flame. And the last one, he was really uh, Guy Lafleur. And, uh, you know, we got Matt Nassino, we got Sako Kivo, and you maybe you're going to get Caulfield every time, but never close of those three French Canadians born in Montreal. And we never have uh, any player close like them anyway in Montreal. The only way we can mention a bit is Stéphane Richer scored two seasons. But otherwise, like those can one day impact the team and the perp and uh, the, the people, no one close to them. And I don't see this, what could happen anymore because I'll keep change anyway, right? So for Big people time. like me, you, and Luke, and those people older, uh, 
been uh, in Arkansas 40, 50 years, and to grow with Guy Lafleur, this is the last one. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. do I cry when Mario Lemieux uh, retired? Yes. Do I I'll cry yeah. when Wayne Kresge? Yes, right? But the impact of Guy Lafleur is maybe my last one. I don't have any other players I can mention to you. Oh, yeah, it was my, I don't have, I, I don't have anybody else. You know, yeah. do I like them? Yes. But what Guy Lafleur did to me, I have no, 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 no one. No one that can tell you, uh, you know, do I like to ski coffee? Yeah, I love Montreal. But my point, like, the, what he did for me, I would never have any other uh, favorite players or an idol like Guy Lafleur. So for me, this, uh, this is the end um, for me about, uh, you know, someone either I can call an idol or something like that. I, I don't have no, nobody else in there. So for me, it's yeah. like, you know, whatever he was retiring and, and you know, 30 years ago, uh, whatever he was doing, I was always, you know, looking and here and, you know. So um, for me, that's the hand for me about uh, Guy Lafleur and uh, about uh, Ida. Uh, Guy yeah. Point, let, look, he said uh, Guy Point is still here, so it's Sava. Cornwall is another one also. Yep. Yeah. And, and I think also... F- for me as well, personally, and I, I think maybe Andrew too, from what I've spoken to about it, Bob Ganey, for sure. No, I'll be devastated. And, uh, you to- know, cause those totally two- different, totally different reasons, but, yeah. uh, had an impact for me because of, of his work ethic. And I, Leadership. I tried to model myself after that, uh, on many occasions and, I had the privilege to to meet up with him too a couple of times, and he's a very humble but very learned man. Very learned. Yeah, yeah. I met him too, and wonderful. And those guys were great. Like, and it's funny because I I actually one of my meetings was both of them together, and that for me was just over. I was over the moon, but just incredible, humble individuals. And you know, I mean, it, it was it's a weird thing. Because I always wanted to be a goal scorer, so it was Guy Lafleur. But then when I added the physicality to my game yeah. of Ganey and yeah. the leadership, <laughs> it just blossomed my game. Yeah, like you said, uh, Jose, they call you know a legend. Legends. That's the reason absolutely. behind that one over there. I think some else said Patrick Roy was special one two for me, but I understand it's yeah. time to create new legend. That's what I mean. That is the main. Uh, look at first talk about Bob Ganey and Ken Dryden. Yep. Yeah. Oh, Ken Dryden was another Ken Dryden, another one. Yeah. And Larry Robinson. Yeah. But again, and for me, because it was not like, not for me, but it was not the French Canadian born in Montreal right. or the yeah. Sarriel, if you turn like that. Um, that's what I'm talking about. What, no one like close like Guy Lafleur. Yeah. And I don't know which French Canadian after that you have an, like a superstar no. in NHL. Well, the only other one I can think of, and he Lemieux. unfortunately wasn't in Montreal, and it was Mario Lemieux. That was Lemieux. my next guy, yeah. right? Yeah. I always wanted, I always wished he had been a half, but that's the last French Canadian I really looked at to that level of being way up there, you know, as a elite, beyond elite. So a guy like Mario Lemieux born and then play for Montreal, that would be an impact like, you know, oh, oh, for sure, yeah. for sure. For yeah. sure. So that's what about that's what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah. Montreal Canadian yeah. legend will never die. They will always be in our heart. Uh, Dan, yeah. well, sure about that. well said, said. Dan. What is well the said. last French Canadian keeper on the flame? Um, yeah. That's what I talk about. Patrick uh, I can see those kind of similar, the, the similar, right? The only thing yeah. Francois like, um, you know, like. He got trade in between that. The story behind Patrick Awa with Montreal Canadian was not, but yeah. Uh, Serge Chavard was a star, Luc Lafortune said. Yeah, he was. Mm-hmm. He was. Oh, yeah. He was. The whole trio there, Le Perrier. Uh, well, Laporte, that team was stacked. Robinson. That team was stacked. Yeah. Just amazing. Yeah, yeah, Francois, you can talk about, you know, we, right now we are open up to anything else. Francois, if you want to talk about anything, we open up. Yeah. Uh, What's appropriate, up coach? Coach, just to to let you know, uh, just a, a a fact. 
um, Montreal's last game at home this year, uh, at which point they will more than likely do some kind of tribute, I, I would hope, for Lafleur as well. Is Sunday, Sunday again against Boston. who? Yeah, Boston. Boston. Yeah, Boston. that's what we talked today. How appropriate. How fitting. How, How appropriate. fitting. <laughs> so yeah. what we did today, we talked about, you know, Bussy against Islanders. Yeah. Right? Uh, Bussy was Islanders playing Montreal when he passed away, right? The first game was in Montreal. And now Montreal play uh, Boston at home uh, when they go there. Um, the only thing they wait right now is... Um, they went uh Monson Saturday, they just wait for the family Lafleur knows what's going on and they ac they want to accept do this, this, this. So um right. you know, if you have a chance to go if you live in Montreal, have a chance to go to the game and the live, you know, um uh, I think that would be an amazing, great story to go there for sure. Uh, exactly. about that. Uh, Nicola, welcome aboard. Congratulations about that one over there. Um Joseph said it's not Bergeron a French Canadian. Bergeron? Uh, yeah, yeah Bergeron I think he is. Canadian. Yes. Yeah, he's a French but he, he can say, do you believe Fran, Fran, Patrice Bergeron is the same like Guy Lafleur or Marie Lemieux or in a defensive world, it, yes. Yeah, in a, but in even a, but even in all fairness, even his offensive numbers are, are have been off the yeah. chart. Like this, he's yeah, produced like a, yeah. Yeah. Many years. Yeah, it's a different I, I would, era. Yeah, I yeah, would put him in that era. category if he Definitely. was in Montreal. Yeah. He was a bit friend, right? It's an uh, it's an a an, an friend kind of star. Why he yeah. create, create the cell key, the defensive side, if you think like that, right? Uh and he produced a lot of points at the same time. I'm not not at the same style like Guy Lafleur or Mario Lemieux. If you think like that, but yeah, so right, Joseph, about that one over there. Yeah. Maybe it would be with Montreal next year, but Let's hope. <laughs> My uh, dream. Yann Jeunet, <laughs> welcome aboard. Yann Jeunet, thanks to join us. Mr. Salah, welcome aboard. Uh, thanks to be a part of the show. Nobody could skate like Lafleur Salah said. Uh, wow. To watch his hair fly. I mean, I was always I was always stunned by him. I don't know. He was just... And that's why I say, anybody just call anybody else the flower? No, no, no. no. The D was the true flower. Uh, welcome aboard, Peter Wenstock. Also, thanks to be a part of the show. Uh, Key Gabonet was great, also, like La Fortune said. Um, Cabano, yep. Uh, Juan yeah. made 86 and 93 possible. He was from the same mold as the Grest Legion Cable to play to the high level under tremendous pressure. Yeah, I mean, Roi, like I said before, for me, that was the only other time that I felt my heart ripped out of my chest. Uh, as much as, you know, I always believe the coach should obviously uh, be listened to on any team. What Tromley did that night was uh, was bad. And then the way it was handled, you know, you don't get rid of a legend like uh, Patrick Roy. That guy should have retired here in Montreal. Same as Carbo, Carbo and Robinson. Same thing. Yeah. yeah. I will tell you one thing. If it was not this happen, right? I'll tell you that three, four years later, Patrick Roy would be trade. Yeah. With Colorado yeah, because the the relationship with Pierre Lacroix, he was big, bigger to anything. So Roy grew with Pierre Lacroix family, become his agent of the, the dad and the, the doctor Patrick Roy. Uh, the dad was a doctor, and then that relationship, and he become an agent, then he become the GM in Colorado. It's just the thing push faster uh, to get there. So uh, I don't think so. He would stay with Montreal 20 years because that's a relationship, I believe. That's what I believe me. Ken Hughes can get some kind of influence at some point. Um, not only the one he was a customer, but the people are inside that uh, company because they are they're only 20 players. They have a lot more. They are working with other agents inside of what he works before to get that bring a couple of players in Montreal at some point. But uh, I think Arua is a great example about that one for sure. Uh, about that. Um, uh, nobody could smoke between a pair like him <laughs> about that. Uh, I see a little if Gila Fleur and Caulfield on some what, uh, he said Danny. 
Euh, Marjorie is a brown is not the same uh, with it 80. Welcome aboard. My favorite was La Fleur ahead to La Mer, then La Mer dropped the guy visit Boston. Okay, you talk about the goal again. The goal. Yeah. Yeah. So I was trying to Yeah. So I would have told Rouet to go home and sleep and then talk tomorrow, and none of this would be happen. I agree. Yeah. I agree. That was, that was yeah. deadly. Yeah. Ray Jean Rule was not the guy to be in power. And Ronald Corey was there right at the first. Uh, he caused level. a lot of problems, Ronald Corey, in behind the yeah, scenes. From absolutely. With a, lot, with a lot of GMs, you know, they took the heat, but he was a guy pushing the button behind the scene, no doubt. I think yeah. I think Chris Chilius told him, so go to Paris and uh, I will see you tomorrow night. <laughs> yeah. That's it. <laughs> That's yeah. a story. Yeah. Sakir, <laughs> uh, what was big at all for me? It's fun. Ariok Lafleur, CG. Yeah. How about that. Different era. Different era. Yeah. And and I'd put Iserman in that category too. I agree. Yep. Most definitely. Most blur and seventies were smoker. Francois said. And drinkers. <laughs> yeah. Should have not left what and then at the world game night too. That was so ter terrible. Uh, terrible. As he said. He nailed it on the head right there. You don't. You well, don't do you know, unfortunately, like as much as I liked Trombley as a player, he wasn't a coach. Sorry. No. You know what I mean? He was a great assistant coach, by the way. Yeah, but he wasn't a coach. <laughs> yeah. No, but he did I, I well. think he did that was well. just a, um, that was a battle of egos. That's what yes. that all was about. And, and yes, they were pretty close. They were pretty close yeah. as when they yeah. were playing together. At one together. point, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that's why, like, when you bring in ex players to come in as your coaches, doesn't work it's, out. It it's got to be at least a a generation removed, you know, yeah. uh, you know, a good ten years, because otherwise, um, it doesn't work. As you said, it, it there's too much. Yeah. Now, on the flip emotion. side, I don't want to defend Mario Tremblay, but Patrick Rouet, it was not easy. And the locker room. I think it was where no, he no. the locker room. Completely. He had a big ego. Big ego. That's right. like yeah. where it was. If you want to have this, 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 it was all over. And it will have to take him. So, I, I, I again, I don't say it's a great goaltender. No, no. I just want You're to right. to you. Like, yeah. It was great goaltender. I agree. Also inside that and locker I, room. And remember, I, I never liked his ego. I, yeah. I preface that by saying, you know, generally speaking, I always take the side of the coach. Like, if this is your coach and this is what the coach is instructing you to do, then, yeah. you know, you take you your directive it. from him, right? Yeah. But in this case, Trombley was out of line. And uh, and and the other thing you got to look at, he had a huge ego. I agree 100% with that coach. Uh, but that's part of his greatness. That's what made him what he is today uh if you look at somebody like uh uh richard he had a huge ego as well like that's what made him great like determined but he had a humbleness he had but a humbleness when you have a richard. player like him at any level any sport right you cannot be alone because now it's everything on him on the ego person but when you have other players that well yeah. did well in Colorado because you have second you have other yeah, yeah. players at the same style a uh, kind of caliber star every time that when he become the only one in in Montreal, that's why he suffered more to anything else uh yeah. because of that situation over there so for me and yeah. you know I, I think you know what make also that martin brother is that's another way also over there because you have other players around him uh, about that for sure um about this for sure. part um uh, uh, Joseph, why are not there more goalies now like a Rua brother as everybody talked like they were the future of the goaltending and their time? So, the best way I would say to you, Joseph, is in the 70s, it was all about Ken Dryden. Yeah, after that, you got the, the Patrick Arrua. With from Gen Dryden, right? And then you get the goaltender you mentioned. Then you have the the you have two great 
coach goaltender. You have Mitch Korn and you have Francois Allaire. Yeah. A little bit different. Allaire was more on the on the butterfly. He turned out. Korn was a little bit more stand up, way more square. And it was all about the details. And that's what I took out two great coaches at that moment. At the same mm -hmm. time, for the last 20 years, you see different country pick it up the gold ten, the gold lease system. If you turn that Russian is the last part of there. You have a couple for Finland also. It's only a time in USA and Canada we did not push hard to develop those kind of gold tender. And uh, we have 20 years. If I, I don't want you know, I know what Carrie Price did, but after Carrie Price in Canada, we we don't have like yeah Fleury, but not like the top of the top. Goaltender. No. Uh, the last one was really Rouet and in uh, um, uh, well, Price. Radar. So we have a lack of the system or the, the building developed goaltender in North America compared to what it did in Russia. Because everything right now is about Russia. The Vasilevsky, oh, yeah. the Zorokin, the Samsonov, the, Yaruz, uh, the Yaruzov, and I can go all the way like that over there. So mm -hmm. that's the problem we got about that. And prior to that, you have the, the, the Sweden, right? You have the goaltender, Lundqvist, and the, all those Sweden play goaltender. And that's, that's how you develop. And then I think the Canada and USA have to find a way uh, to develop better goaltender uh, because you don't have a lot. Of course, you have the great, the good one, but the greatest one, like the, not many come anymore no. from North America. You're right. So Most of them are from I, I don't know if they explain something there, but... Um, oh, that sounds really good. You're hitting that the nail on the head. That makes total sense because uh, you're right. Like, we haven't had that in Canada, and they've they've been hands off thinking that just because uh, hockey started in Canada that we're always going to be on top of the world, and it's it's not going to be the case. And it's not just goaltending, right? Exactly. You have to be very careful because other countries are starting to slowly catch up. And, you know, and because Luke Lafosson bring Dale Howardchuck was great. Oh, I uh, loved him. Love Dale Howardchuck. Ten years, yeah. ten years earlier, I grew to watching Guy Lafleur and my, Michael Bussey. Ten yeah. years later, I watched Dale Howardchuck with the Cornwall Royals with Oval Daisy. And right. after that, I got the, the Pat Lafontaine, everybody after that. But my point to you I want to trade is sometimes a, a mistake. Because in our talk earlier about uh, yesterday, oh, yeah, but it take eight, ten years to develop and to get that level, right? But I would not say it that way. A mistake could push back you for seven, yes. eight, ten years, maybe longer. And because yes. look like for some talk about Dela Wachat. That bring me Doug Wigganizer and David Savard. Yeah, yes. Denny Savard, yeah. 1980s. Look how long that yeah. put us behind. Right. We were behind right. for a long time. And then I, I don't want to go back in, in 90s and 2000s. The next one close to us is Brady Katschak and Kukenemi. Yeah. <laughs> and so true. My point to you is this part. If we have Brady Katschak, the story what we add today could be really different what we, be, yeah. we became with Cook Enemy. Because yeah. I think yeah. a Katschuk and that team, when you have a Gallagher and those kind of, I think it will be this fun culture, this fun team, we turn out. But all overall, what I try to bring, sometimes a bad decision could push your team uh, backwards for many. Like Edmonton Oilers. With all the right. draft they exactly. did, right? And with oh. McDavid, they got at the end of five, five years, right? Imagine if they had picked the best of the best those five years with McDavid, they are maybe the one will maybe win the Stanley Cup right now. That's or we we'll right. talk about another team like that. And again, I, I, you know what I mean? I'm not, I just try to give you another perspective or a different thing about that. I'm not yeah. agree with Enotap for 10 to, to 8 to 10 years, but I can understand what he meant by those kinds of French because you never know what could around. Bring to what I'm talking now. It's easier to pick number one or number two, right? But still, not always guarantee you pick the best of the best. No, no. it's not. And yeah, I, I, it's not like I, automatically. 
And I'll give you an example. How many times you picked number four? Kel McCarr. The Michael Bossy was another one. We picked, I uh, you know, Maurice Zeller. Yeah. Well, Coach, how many, how many times have you done a, a, a redraft of a draft? Yeah. Like, and you've shown and said, oh, this guy won eighth. This guy won 20th. You know, and, and we found some gems in the second, third rounds, right? Like, oh, a, a, yeah. a, a big part of the rebuild is yes you have to have the right management you have to uh, obviously draft and develop well you have to build a culture those are all essential you have to have a great coach there uh in place uh goaltending obviously but uh, it, it, at the end of the day it does come down to luck you know and uh, you know as a, as you said earlier andrew if we don't pick doug wickenheiser and we pick denny savard you know that that culture that Fort winning change. ways would have <laughs> yeah. continued for another ten years. Yeah, as yeah. because now you don't know if Islanders going to have four Stanley Cup after that. Exactly. exactly. We we would have gone on longer with a Denny Savard. There's no right. doubt in my mind. But I think I think I can see both of your points. And I like for you, Entertap, saying you know you you see it as being seven or eight. I think you're right. If we were under the a lot of the old administrations and management that we've been under the last 25 years you're right in that sense but i think coach is right in the sense that look at gordon's track record with boston and new york you've got the right guy finally you got the right type of guy it won't happen that way like the some of the fools we've had running our team yep and Francois said something great here. Winner are really easy character. They're character people. Yes, absolutely. Steve G said, thank great you, Lacroix. I'm sure about this. Uh, Kelly, welcome aboard. I don't know if we said hi to Kelly when she showed up. Uh, I think thank she you. came earlier, <laughs> earlier than she left. Uh, anyway, welcome back. If you all come back. Uh, if we forgot, we apologize. For me, the legend Patrick Roy is one. He played in Montreal in Colorado. He was great, but never like he was in Montreal. Francois Petre. Uh, exactly, David, don't look easy to in the locker room. Alexandre Maillard, uh, they just eye each other. Plan before that, coach. Um, Jacques Plan. Plan, Plan yeah. he was now with the same time with Maurice Richard and uh, also like uh, Jean Béliveau. Uh, Richard, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Richard, he was, he yeah. Trade. Richard, he was. Yeah, I remember yeah. Jacques Plan more me when he played with, uh, you know, Toronto in, Seno, in Boston at the end. Have you turned that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, brother Joseph, do whatever it takes to stop the puck. I don't see that desperation from goalie as much anymore. Yeah. It's a different, it's a different style altogether. And yeah, I'd like to see some changes in the style of the goalies today. Cause it's like we were talking, there's too much of automatically being on your knees. You never seen the top of the net open up back in the day. The way it's opening up now. Uh, I agree with you, Joseph, about that. Uh, Jose said uh, about it right on Jose. Did he saw as he played with the Hawks was simply amazing, Francois Pitt. Oh, was he ever? Spinorama. <laughs> well, he, he put Chicago on the map. Absolutely. Did he ever? I the mean, it, it was just unfortunate. We finally, we finally got Denny Savard at the end of his career, and he did yeah, finally played. win the cup in Montreal. Thank God. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> he wasn't able to participate in in the finals there. I think he broke his leg. Yeah, and, uh, he did. He was out. For he was the behind the bench, playoffs. though. He was behind the bench. He was behind Coaching. the bench. Yeah, but you know, he amazed me through his whole career. If you watched his spinorama, I never understood how the puck never left left his stick in all of those loops he was oh, doing. Just like amazing. a string, like a, a string magnet. Attached. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we trade we trade Denis Saval for Chris Chelou. Chris Chelou played for sixty six more years after that. Yeah, and look <laughs> at how many cups <laughs> and look at how many cups he had in Detroit. Um, <laughs> the first game by Saval in Montreal with Canazer was a healthy scratch. Was he? I, I I didn't know that. I think he was he was he went to Paris the night before and then they put him out. <laughs> that's what happened about that but again if you think about this 
why they pick what can I observe versus Sabal? It's not going to, again, influence know. about the big guy, the big center, and all the stuff like that. Too many times we have one in our, in our backyards and we just skip. And we, we skip, skip them. Exactly. And we skip them. Yeah, that's it was always, that's what made us successful. You look at, you know, in the 70s, we had a great mix. You went with the best player. You didn't go with just one brand. You know what I mean? It was a great mixture of everything together, you know? And Francois said, Francois said, unfortunately for Saval, Mike Cannon uh, overused him and burned him uh, also. Uh, but again, he, he, did not, he was not alone. Al Secord, Steve Lammer. Uh, oh, they man. have a lot yeah. of great players around him. Doug Wilson. <laughs> and then yeah. you have uh, Ed Belfort. Isaac. Uh, Tom uh, Lyle. You know, Ed Belfort was the guy was like, uh, you know, he was goalie the night, and the next day he was to one to his clinic, the, the, the AAA, then come back to play hockey, then we return to the AAA, and everything like that. Um, I coached Daniel Bertillon. Nobody remember Bani D Daniel Bertillon? He's a goaltender with the last yes, yes. He was yes. a great. Yes. Yeah. He was a great goaltender, junior. He got draft play game. But he was telling me a story about like it, it, it was weird, like weird, like those kind of year, those eighties. Many players have so much talent, but they got destroyed oh, with know. drug, beer, woman, everything. Like that. It, it was not like today. What's already have, but not like it was in eighties. And he was not follow up, right? Um, so he was telling me, sorry, he what he got trade to Ottawa, and he was said they will drive from Ottawa after the practice in the morning at 12 p.m. Uh, and then drive to Montreal, go to Paris, and all left and right, and then come back the next morning, and then go back practice, return like that. Whatsoever his career will be short. I, I don't know exactly. I can look about Bertillon, but he went to Ronec Express. He was my. He came the second year was there, and I become real friends for him uh, because we're French. We think he was 32 years old, and he met a wow. he met a woman over there, and the woman, um, she was cute, but the dad have money, and um, he have a lot of money. So anyway, when he become he become a fisherman, and he, he he now he's on the Smith Lake, and you know I have a story with him for many 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 years over there. And uh, anyhow, it was a great. To talk about the Nepal film tonight, but uh, you never know. You have to. Uh, the, the one mistake could turn around and to be over for many, uh, for the players, for organization, if you try that. So, uh, would be very interesting about that one. There, uh, we have Mr. Black Ox fan 97. I'm here. Welcome, Mr. Black Ox. Hey, welcome. Hey, welcome. Hey, somebody has a shut up or uh, a, a hat trick tonight. Uh, yeah, I, I think he's on my <laughs> list, right? I think so. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. Did you take him? You took a Vander? Oh, I think so. Oh, you took a Vander. Okay. Yeah. I know uh, I had a Fiala. A plant mm -hmm. run a St. Louis to the Stanley Cup, I think, Luc Lafarson. No. No, you didn't take him. You didn't uh, take him, coach. Sorry. What? You didn't, you didn't take, take him. him. You, took, uh, you took McKinnon, Dreisaitl, and Norris. Yeah, yeah, but he was, he's on my... He's on my, my uh, backup team. <laughs> yeah, but they're all three <laughs> playing those ones. If someone of them does not play tonight, he's on my backup team. How am I supposed to win? <laughs> well, I don't know if, he, if they play. We have to follow up. But I think he is so well. Uh, uh, mentally, I, I know I like your system. <laughs> um, well, um, Black, I just let you know you're here. Welcome aboard. I just want to let you know. We never left. We see him since last night, Black. Was, what happened to you? <laughs> we never left. I don't know. We, we uh, I don't know. You have to follow us more, uh, Black. Us. We never left at all. Uh, Plan brought St. Louis to the Stanley Cup, I think. Now, uh, look. Now, uh, uh, wait, wait a minute. Uh, look. You talk about they never win the Stanley Cup. They bring to them. I think it was uh, Glenn Hall, but I could be wrong. I have to mm -hmm. check about this. Right. I miss the 90s yeah. physical style hockey compared to the current fitness style. About that one over there. Uh, again, Montreal did. Yeah. Imagine Goli tried to make jump save like they did back and then or the bad they have today. A lot of players yeah. did not make it then because of the 16 team. Look at Fosun. 
Uh, Oilers 4-2, Avalanche Kane trap three goals. Yeah. Others are getting hot when it matters. Uh, Coach, yeah. have you given uh, Kenan uh, passé le sel d'Armoniac en dessous du nez à Denis Savard quand il avait craché des pisements sur le banc vu sur CBC? Là, on dirait que sur la glace à Denis a scoré. Oh, wow. Yeah, Mike Kenan was another uh, phenomenon in hockey. Yeah. McDavid is not a human right. He's a god. He's getting hot. Ever since uh, Huberto took over the lead, he said, wait yep. a minute, don't forget about me. <laughs> Ron, we said, they're, oh, Scott they're, they may be is dangerous Scott now, Walker. you know? Yeah. Uh, contre les others and playoff, Kinnan, the double shift, uh, he said about that one over there. And uh, Scott Steven, uh, Steve G, talk oh, about Scott okay. Steven. Mathieu will defense? win the heart yet one to one. Anyone will trade Mathieu if they got McDavid and return. McDavid means me to see the same Mathieu does. Is uh, uh, listen, man, it was a train wreck last tonight. Um, yeah, I apologize, Blackhawks. But by the way, you did not come to the show tonight, but uh, you did a very good job, Mr. Blackhawk, last night. <laughs> you got. Um, From uh, Dilwitz uh, Smith verification, confirm uh, Blackhawks last night. You did very well. Um, you got eight and three last night. Your best performance as your prediction. So I just want to confirm with you. Uh, we keep every paper because Kelly knew remind always the next day. So we take a chance. We take picture now. We send to Dilwitz <laughs> Smith verify. Come back to us and we give credit to Kelly. That's how it works now. <laughs> we, we, we cannot miss anything anymore. So, um, oh, you're not shocked. You do well, Black Ox. You have to have a little bit more confidence about you. I, I think you're better what you think you are. Um, if you listen in our tap, you'll be fine. But sometimes you <laughs> yeah. cannot listen all the time. So no. be careful, right? <laughs> Follow a little bit GM, Yamo, but listen more what he said. Because people don't pay too much attention to what he said. But he did. he said a lot of great things. But... At the end, just go within our, uh, within our tap. You'll be fine, Blackhawks. Don't worry about that. How about this? Uh, Luc Lafourcine said, Amnoniak was the threat back then. Uh, no, look, it was, um, it was a Samantha Fox. It was, um, you know, um, you know, photo police newspaper. That's another one also. That's another story I can talk a little bit better. <laughs> about that uh, imagine San Jose fan reaction if Kane won the Stanley Cup uh, so I, yeah yeah no kidding what is going on with the Vegas uh, goalie situation today he's um, done I, I don't he's know Adam um, he he was oper he had the operation oh did he actually have it because I heard them yeah. come out and DeBoer yeah, was yeah. saying it wasn't true he, he's now here's done. the key Adam said Leonard yeah. need surgery and they are trained to deny the report yeah that's what i think too i think they, they who's, tried to who's trying it. who's trying to the board the board the coach came out and said that no those reports are not true that he doesn't need surgery that's what he came out and said really? uh, so I, yeah i found it very fishy yeah the something's up over there yeah. Uh, yeah even the way uh leonard was treated after the second last game uh yeah. you know the the board threw him under the bus and then the next game he, he starts them and and he yeah. pulls them after the first period no yeah. you don't do that no i agree um yeah this organization is a mess adam said look la fortune je juste te dire que quand ma mère elle achetait la photo police puis la loup police moi je prenais la page du milieu puis ma mère elle cherchait toujours le milieu de la page um So what I'm talking about is like you have a French newspaper, it's called Alupolis, and they have all the kind of bad story, like, you know, someone <laughs> killed someone, or yeah, it was all about the police. But in the middle of the newspaper, it was all about beautiful women and bikini, <laughs> everything like that. That was the middle of the, I don't oh, know why, don't the ask Toronto me Sun. why. Uh, <laughs> maybe some of them make some of the playboy at some point, but I'm not sure, I did not recruit them. But what I did is my mom was, by the boat a Sunday. I don't think it was delivery to, at the door or whatsoever is. And you'll um, have to get the house code out there, coach. 
But what happened is this part. So when they got the newspaper. Get the robe. What? Get the rowboat. <laughs> yeah. So what I did, I was always take the middle of the Alupolis out. Uh, my, my mom was looking. She always missing page number 38 and 39 and 40, 41. <laughs> so he was in my room. So uh, <laughs> that's what I share with that. Because the French people remember that one over there. <laughs> uh, I would have loved to know him, Coach, when he was young. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. Look, it, I remember, look, he said he was, he was in, in color, by the way. So it was great about that one there. It was easier that way because if you keep the, the Playboy magazine, it's bigger. So it's hard to hide. But a one page like that, you, you can put this on your top and, 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 and your shoes. <laughs> Nobody see it. And I was open up there at the school and, you know, I was sharing my other alupalis with everybody. I did not know who was the, the killer during the week, but I know exactly who she was in the middle of the oh, page. Man. <laughs> Knew him by first name. <laughs> But anyway, that's another story we can talk a little bit later. Um, because I still, I don't have them anymore, but um, for a long sure. time. Uh, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> He's got them right under the referee. I, 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 I keep Gila Fleur. <laughs> I, I, I keep Hogan. Gila Fleur. <laughs> Flashing. <laughs> And so I said, Coach, your mom knew what she's doing. Of course she knew it. If she loved me, she said, I wouldn't tell him, no, let's do it. And that my dad was upset, but my mom said, like, come on. It's just Samantha Fox or, you know, like Pamp Anderson and everything like that, you know. But in my time, it was more uh, Brigitte Bardot. No. <laughs> Who remember Brigitte Bardot? Uh, Francois <laughs> and Alex. And <laughs> Brigitte Bardot was my first one. Where was my star? Uh, about that one there, but that's another big story well, about that. Uh, right make sure now, we well. talk this, then I will talk about Gila Fleur. Gila Fleur, right now, he's laughing to us right now. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, coach, there would better not be a sticky stuff on the stick of the magazine. Uh, no, uh, honestly, it was not. Yeah, maybe stick somewhere else, oh. but uh, it was out about that. Okay. <laughs> this is getting real bad. <laughs> uh, there we go. You see, in our time, people remember all those names. Me, I go public. The people don't tell me I go public. I don't say that. And then during that time, Kane at Trick tonight, Yamo would be happy in the morning. Again, Jose, about that sure. one of us. Um, you know, I don't want to go here. We have a, a busy weekend, everybody. And uh, I want to keep everybody up down here. Let's talk about the French quiz, the quiz of the night. Uh, the f then we said a uh, power play. Uh, it's a five question, ladies and gentlemen. And let's talk about this. Uh, I don't know, uh, Andrew, if you can pick it up a little bit higher or lower. Uh, it's up to you, honestly. And we can go from there. Who's going to win the, the French quiz uh, tonight, Mr. Enartap? Uh, I think you are in the, in the, in the streak or something. Here. I think you're due. I think you're due to win, Enartap. Uh, I, I think in our time it was zero seven yep. since that part over there. Uh, <laughs> look, so that's why I like this show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, we are really versatile. We change the subject sometimes. We we go there. I remember the legend Farah Fawcett. That's what I'm looking for. It was oh, Farah Fawcett. Uh, that's what I'm looking for. The the there you go. About that one over there. We uh, all had that on our wall. Uh, <laughs> yeah. One side of a fellow for a set down the page was George, but that's another subject. Here we go. Question number one of the night. Uh, it's all about Gila Fleur or relate to uh, Gila Fleur. Easy question. I'm telling you now, you go to get it. Uh, uh, oh, sure. It's Gila Fleur. So, how many goals he did during his career junior season a playoff altogether? 386 goals he did. Is it under? Over or exact. Good luck, everybody. Yeah, better chance to win tonight. <laughs> Look there for since so we should do a, a Bardo win a quiz. Uh, no, we should do a French quiz uh, with uh, Farah Fawcett and uh, Alupolis. Everybody have the Farah Fawcett, the Corvette poster. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, I had I have this on double. Uh, under uh, RJ, Steve under. Uh, we have two peop people, so you, you guys, you have better chance to win tonight. Only two people participate, so you have better chance. Oh, now it's get out. Uh, Steve said, uh, uh, Jose said, exact. Uh, Adam said, under. Francois Pitt said, under. Black Ox, maybe A. I would keep <laughs> as an under. Jose Laham, he said, over. Uh, Peter said, exact. Rodwick King said, under. Luke Lefferson said under. And let's go with uh, in our thought at the beginning. I'll go with uh, under. Under in our tap. And Mr. Are you follow your teammates? No, I'm going to go exact. Exact. All right. But. Oh, my God. Maybe you don't follow him because he don't have a great success. And you beat him last week. That's maybe the possible. But <laughs> honestly, guys. Most of them said under. We have a few uh, exact. And nobody took under or uh, over, only one person. It's on over Locked with 300. <laughs> Joseph Laham, take oh, the my lead. Word. <laughs> only oh. Joseph got that one over there. Oh, my God. <laughs> Okay, good night, coach. Good night, everyone. <laughs> yeah. See you later. <laughs> Question number two. Oh, my Here God. We go. During his initial draft 1971, the Abs draft 12 players. How many goals they did all together in initial? 1,006 gold they did all 12 together. Is it under, oh, over, God. or exact? Uh, Oh, my okay, God. It's so easy, eh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Nicola, I, I will give it to Nicola. Nicola, he did. Uh, internet is a bit behind about that. Uh, uh, Nicola now said under. Uh, Steve G said exact. Uh, RG said exact. Thank you. Uh, we're missing a couple. Ron uh, with King said under. We have a black cock set under. Jose said exact. Thank you, Jose. Look, that person said exact. Uh, Peter said under. And Joseph Laham. Uh, nobody said Joseph Laham. <laughs> I don't see it. Um, is, uh, sometimes he show up to my other computer. Joseph Laham, uh, he said, you know, I better to don't insert, so I, I would take, he said C, exact. Uh, here we go, we got it. There you go, it start with you, mister. Uh, I'm going to go under. Under. Are uh, you follow your teammate? He win all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go... Uh... Exact. Oh my God! And the answer, you should follow him. Under <laughs> 1,005 <laughs> players uh, score goal. Now we have a few people right now. Uh, oh we God. have Nicola take the lead at two, but Ron King, Andrew, Peter, and also Blackhawks and Joseph, all, all the five other players all at one. Nicola take the lead oh at my two. God. After two. Three, question number three. Are you ready for this one? Easy one. Yeah. Look, I give you an, an easy one. How many times he got draft during his career professional as a hockey player? One two. time, two time, or three time? Any player? Any player? No. Guy Lafleur, how many times he got draft during his career professional as a hockey player. I think this is an easy one. I think. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, Nicola said under. Ron King said over. Give me a uh, about question. <laughs> it's um, one, two, or three. <laughs> Jose Duardi said one. Uh, Jose Duardi. Over here. 
Uh, B for François Petre, he said. Uh, we have Black Ox at uh, under uh, one. Steve G said uh, B. We have uh, Pete said B. Uh, RG said A. Uh, Luc Lepersen said three. Kelly said three. Uh, what is uh, Nicola? Uh, Nicola said A. Is it the first answer, Nicola, or the second answer? Jose, uh, Joseph said two, uh, B. Uh, Nicola, uh, can you give me your answer again at the bottom, please? Nicola de Gobi. It's only a time, it's on our tap. Uh, one time, two time, or three time? I believe it's three. I think the, the juniors, Quebec juniors. Uh, the Zorin is career professional, not Zorin the junior. Professional only. Professional meaning NHL in this case? Yes, like professional. Well, you know, because junior it cannot be drafted at 16 by Quebec, right? The Quebec, right, right. I, it's not calm. It's only professional. Well, professional, it was only drafted by Montreal then. All right, so you go oh, with one. One? One. All right. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Andrew. I agree totally. I agree once. <laughs> All right. If his drafts are on an expansion, what are you thinking about that one over there? There was no expansion. The answer on this one? Oh, my God! It's two. He I got drafted <laughs> by the Minnesota in 1991, and he never played over there. He got trade after that. Again, Alan Howard. Um, oh, wow. So he draft he got draft twice in NHL about that wow. one. Wow! Can you believe that, Enderdap? <laughs> wow! <laughs> I'm still perfect. So Joseph Lehan is at two. Nicola at two. Peter at two. Ron with King at two. Wow. We have a few people at one. Uh, here we go. Oh my God! Question number four. It's easier now. So oh, oh yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> Can't wait. How many how many team he scored 30 goals, Gila Fleur? How many team he scored 30 goals a plus again? So how many did how many, many times he did 30 times goal again opening teams in NHL? We're looking for 10 team. Did he score 10 team? Did he score less or 10 team? Or did he did more 11 team? He scored 30 goals against them. Here uh, we go. But he only played for three teams. He's only played for three teams in NHL. Yeah. Right. So how many times did he score 30 goals? How many times he scored 30 goals against? So when he was one month he maybe scored 40 goals against Chicago. He maybe scored 36 goals with Boston. He maybe go like 36 goals with uh, Pittsburgh, everything like that. Does it make sense? So yeah. his career in NHL, how many times he scored 30 goals again? An opponent team. So his career. Against them. So he scored maybe 60 goals against Chicago, 26 goals with Vancouver. And then you have some great dreams, don't you? <laughs> Here we go. Kelly said C. Uh, RJ said B. Oh, my Nicola word. said C. Steve said B. Joseph said B. Ron with King said C. Jose Duarte said exact. Peter said exact. How many boyfriends did Bridget Bardo have? <laughs> I was not involved with that one. Exact for uh, Black Ox. Francois Pitt said exact. Luke Lefferson said, Jesus, can you put me right now here? He said B. Here we go. Let's go with, uh, it's, I think it's Andrew now. Exact. Exact. Are you following you, the man of the man, Mr. Enotab? Uh, said, no, it's time for me to snap this one. I need to get it. Whatever <laughs> you do, Mr. Enotab. I know. You haven't, you haven't used an exact yet, so I'm tempted, but I'm going to go under. You are the only one took under do you know that well that's good that's a good thing about that did he oh did it 
He did it. It's under <laughs> 19. And Finally. in a bad thing to lead, they get one good insert tonight. Um, no everybody way. else was zero. And now for the final question, we have four people take the lead. Joseph, Nicola, Run with Kings, and then Peter at that moment. And that's what happened. Uh, Michael was on blood set over uh, a little bit late, Michael, but we did not get it. Uh, oh, my God! Last question of the night. Uh, some people can get it. Um, Pretty good one. I think this oh one... Oh, my God! It's going, you're going to like it. Oh, yeah. I did some search on that one. <laughs> we love them all. Yeah. Guy Lafleur, when he played NHL, he lost 377 games in NHL. How many goals he did during the game they lost in NHL? The number of the goals is 76. Is it under, over, or exact? Good luck. Wow. <laughs> Michael said exact. Um. Hmm. Uh, Nicola said over. Uh, Nicola Gobi, he rest combien de questions? Sa dernière, mon, mon, mon Nicola. Round with King said under. We're just talking about goals here, not points. Okay. RJ said exact. And the Bullock, oh my God, the Bullock and the Rosenblatt all together right now. Don't forget to click on the <laughs> likes, by the way, both of you. That'd be great. And the Bullock, my friend, I coach him and also Michael Rosenblatt. So that's what I want to mention to you uh, about this one over there. Um, oh, and he Michael said, exactly. Here? Kelly okay. said over. Uh, we Michael. have a uh, Black Ox said under. I'm behind right now. I was talking. Sada, exact. Jose said exact. Jose right now, uh, you're zero 04. Be careful. Francois Pitt, he said over. We have uh, Peter, he said over. Uh, Coach Quiz is out of college, <laughs> college exam. Jake N, <laughs> Jake N said exact. <laughs> Luke Lepperson said exact. Uh, Joseph Laham said exact. Uh, Jake and hey coach, hey buddy, I have no idea. Uh, what's up, uh, Rosenblatt said what's up, Andy, about that one over there. And now it's time to tell me, guys, uh, what do you think about that? Uh, let's go with um, um, with in our top. I answered the last one, didn't I? Okay. No, um, I did. <laughs> is there one more you question call. after this? That's the last one. one. Oh, this is the last one. And you yep. haven't given an exact yet. But knowing you, you probably <laughs> want us to believe this will be exact. So I'm going to go over. Over. Uh, are you follow you, teammate. He win the last question. Yeah, I am going over. That was my plan, so I'm going over. <laughs> over, over, over for them part. And you know what? Maybe oh you're right, God. right, because you are so right. You have no yeah. exact tonight. Uh, 77 <laughs> B, but not good enough to win tonight because the winner tonight is Nicola de Gobi de Bono and job, Peter Nicolai. Winstock. Uh, and Peter, with three tonight. But good job, guys. And I'll tap Andrew, Francois Pitre, and uh, also uh, Joseph at two. Uh, Black Ox, one with Kelly, and also uh, Steve G is at one tonight. So congratulations for um, for the winner tonight, uh, Nicola, and also uh, uh, Peter Winstock. Uh, great to see you guys. Uh, congratulations. We need to get the congratulations. We got to get them. Yeah, we got to come up with a couple questions for Coach. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's what it, you know me. So that's what we get <laughs> to get there. But it How was tricky. Yeah, I, 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 I tried to trick everybody about that one over there. 
Um, listen, it's an uh, event before what we leave. Um, <laughs> you know, tonight was all about the Tribune. Uh, Gila flirting was great. It was not about the people show up tonight, but about more the fact we talk about someone we're special for each one of us here tonight and many of the chat tonight also. Um, one more thought you have maybe or you want sharing before we go. Well, it's more. You go ahead, Intertap. No, I, I, again, just the, my d deepest condolences to the entire Lafleur family. Um, I, I know it's 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 a lot, a big loss for them, uh, but it's a big loss to everybody that Lafleur has come in contact with in his uh, illustrious career of seventy years, um, and. It was a privilege having been a, a very small subset of that, and it 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 has affected me in in many ways. I'd have to agree. I I'd say uh, you know all condolences to the family, and you know I think also you know the the Montreal Canadiens as an organization, all the teammates he had, you can imagine how uh, a lot of them are feeling as well, and uh, the hockey community. Because uh, I, like I say, just for my the, the little bit of times I've met him, uh, and the impact was huge, and I can't imagine being around him continually. The impact he must have had on a lot of people there, right there. So you know, uh, he's always going to be great. He'll never be forgotten, and uh, I, I'm sure he's up there with the his uh, the two predecessors, and now they're they've got the ultimate line. You know, he's going to be great. You have the same kind of jersey like Billy Vaux and, um, and uh, Maurice Richard upstairs, so that'd be great about that one over there. Um, Luke, you ask who he was, uh, his first singer. Uh, I don't know, Luke, maybe Jeanette Renault, uh, Michel Richard, or maybe uh, Nicole Martin. I don't know, Luke, about that part over there. Uh, but I want to remember just Guy Lafleur, me. Uh, I never talk about this tonight, but I was there when he got his 1,000 points nice. uh, at the Forum when they were 7 to 1. Uh, they nice. beat them. He got his, his 1,000 points at the beginning of the third period. Uh, but my life has always been messed up. It's always been my, my life is messed up. I, 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 I just screw everything. And uh, I was in the building, but I didn't see it. I was at the restroom uh, when Guy no. Fleur got the 1,000 points. So I was at the game, but I never see Guy Lafleur score that uh, got his 1,000 points, Mr. Nata. Wow. So um, the, the, the news, I never returned to the restroom uh, after that during a hockey game. I wait always <laughs> when the horn is over or when the horn will start about that one over there. But I have the ticket. It's not like also. today. I was still It's not like today that they had TVs in the washroom. <laughs> Well, that's a problem about that. They put some or maybe page, it was Hooters in the washroom. They put some news <laughs> over there, over the the the, the Eri Noir over there, and now I start to read the news, and then I said, "Jeez, I look at page number thirty-eight. I need to check my collection again." So I took the page from the wall. I bring me with me, and the time I did that, Guy Lafleur was a standing ovation in the building, and we hear the no the noise, Guy Guy Guy. Guy, and I want to finish this with the, the name Guy, 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 because for many times, for many years, and you know what it reminds us, what we, maybe we never talk about this tonight is, you know, I joke a lot, but uh, that reminds me my dad, the night, the Saturday night, a white black TV, 24 inches, and the stand, and watching the game with him, beside him, sit on his arm, fall, fall sleeping. That's what is most important things. Those stories or those nights by Guy Lafleur, that's what I remind me the most. So when we said he make an impact in hockey, yes, but he make an impact on so many families because every night oh, yeah. we wants to watch Guy Lafleur the Saturday night. And uh, that's just another perspective of what he bring on the table for us. Like I said, for me, I will never have another idol every turn that. So uh, 
Let's conclude, guys. Another great night of the Hockey Nation live show with a power play show, guys. And uh, I will let you know, go that way. And uh, we want to thank everyone inside that uh, chat tonight to sharing with us your story about Gila Fleur. And uh, usually we do with, uh, you know, uh, you have greatness inside of you, everything like that. I don't want to go that way. We're going to close the show with only a tribune at the end with the music for Gila Fleur. And I want to thank personally uh, in our tap and um, Andrew for your time tonight. And everybody in the chat, we wish you an amazing, great night, an amazing, great weekend. I will be back tomorrow at 7 o'clock for another game. So thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm.